Greetings everyone, my name is Munir Nasser. I'm a jazz musician, composer, historian, and author. I'm currently working on a book entitled Upright Bass, The Musical Journey of Jamil Nasser, who was a great bassist, composer, arranger, union organizer, educator, and he was also my father. On January 31st, 2003, we embarked on an effort to document in upwards of 50 years of his involvement in the jazz and blues business. He's played with many great names in the music. This includes Ahmed Jamal, Phineas Newborn, George Coleman, Lou Donaldson, Monty Alexander, Al Haig, and many others. The book Upright Bass contains many of these experiences, a lot of them being revealed for the first time in print, including the story of a great genius, Oscar Denard, who the world really doesn't know anything about, but he was heralded by many of the great musicians, and he perished under very tragic circumstances in Cairo, Egypt. There are many, many stories that's going to add much value to the present canon of jazz literature. What do you think uh, we can, as a, uh, a jazz audience, or just an American audience, or just a world audience, what will we get from um, this book, Upright Bass? Well, I see, and I've read many of the books. I've been an avid reader of literature on jazz for the last 30 years. And what you see a lot of times is a focus on the person out front, whether it's Delonious Monk, Louis Armstrong, John Coltrane, or Miles Davis, you never hear the voice of the sidemen. What they see, what they experience, a lot of times they're covered up and we never get their perspective, which is another kind of perspective from the leader, the things they see, experience, and observe. So what you're gonna get is another perspective and also a perspective of a man that had a clear mind that was a student, not just playing and not observing what was going on. He was under the mentorship of Papa Joe Jones, Lester Young, many of the elders taught him many things that he passed on to us through this book. And so for the first time you'll hear a lot of perspectives, not only his, but the elders who talked to him about the music. And uh, that's the thing about this book. It's not uh, your run-of-the-mill jazz book on a great personality that was a leader. And we have many of them. I mean, you see people write over and over on the same jazz musicians, whether it's Coltrane or Miles. Finally, you get a musician that's played with some of those great, and he recorded maybe six or seven albums with Coltrane and Red Garland and many other people. Monk, he, he played with Monk in 72 at the Aqua Lounge. It gives you another perspective from a clear, sober-minded observer of the business of jazz from many different angles. And another thing he wanted was the musicians to take ownership of their compositions so they would have a greater financial stake because a lot of times they played the music and they didn't take care of business and that was taken away from them. And so that's why a lot of them ended up poor after years of productivity and making classic albums. Next thing you know, they have no health insurance, they're indigent. And so his work through the Jazz Foundation was geared toward helping these musicians, you know, empower themselves and gain ownership. So in their, you know, sunset years, when they're not working as much, they still could have a comfortable life which they deserve to have. Now, how can the public assist you in uh, getting this book to completion? Right, good question. Um, I need an editor, which is going to cost uh, between $1,500 and $2,000. I have to get a, a cover art. I have to have them printed. Uh, there's a lot of different costs associated with producing a book. And consistent with his legacy, I wanted to be the best possible representation of his history. So I don't want to cut corners in terms of quality. So if people help me by contributing, I'll be able to present the best book possible in, in a short amount of time. I want to thank each and every last one of you in advance for your support and help me to complete this project. In doing this, you are helping to further the cause of educating the world about this great and wonderful art form called jazz and you're also helping my father in his absence to tell his story which he collected 
materials from the very first concert he had practically to the last one in spans over 50 years so you would actually be helping him achieve a goal he's no longer here but you could help him through me to achieve this goal of publishing his history and his great music called jazz <laughs>